Chainsaw Man is a series rich in storytelling. Tatsuki Fujimoto asks his readers to think deeper about his story, to look at every aspect written and unwritten, and come to conclusions he himself has not concretely written out for them. Like most thought-provoking forms of art, it makes you feel things, asks you questions, and expects you to come to your own conclusions. Today I want to take a look at Makima and Nayuta, and how her introduction to the series is ironic and shows Makima's greatest flaw, her arrogance, and similar to Denji, her admiration. While Denji admired her to an unhealthy degree, Makima admired the Chainsaw Man in a similar vein. These two factors blinded her to the potential and the relationships Denji had formed throughout the series, completely shattering her plans. But before I get into that, if you like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification so you never miss a video. I frequently make these types of analysis videos on anime, manga, and video games, so if that's what you're into, stick around and let's watch this channel grow. Thank you all for 2,000 subscribers, let's get the channel to 5,000 next. And with that, let's continue the video. Makima had orchestrated many parts of Denji's life akin to what Aizen did to Ichigo. She was so fixated on her plan that she failed to see the extent of the relationships Denji had created. Or, more appropriately, the relationships that she created for Denji. Power was more than a sister. What Denji and Power had was intimate. It was special. It was romantic. It was the catalyst that led to Makima's defeat, similar to Aki Hayakawa. He was one of Denji's first friends, his best friend, his brother. Aki and Power made a great sacrifice which was what I said prior led to Makima's defeat. Now, I won't go into detail with these things. If you do want my full thoughts on Aki Hayakawa, I've already done an analysis video on him that I'll link in the description, The Tragedy of Aki Hayakawa. And if you want my thoughts on Power and Denji's relationship and why I think it's more than solely platonic, I'll leave that video in the description as well, The Complicated Relationship of Power and Denji. If Makima hadn't introduced these factors into Denji's life, she would have most likely been able to accomplish her goal, which mind you, was not an evil one. She just went about it the wrong way, which is something very common in anime and manga. Makima reminds me of a few Naruto antagonists, Obito Uchiha, Madara Uchiha, and Nagato Uzumaki. In fact, her entire plan is very reminiscent of the infinite Tsukuyomi, at least the idea around it. Now before we get into Makima, let's look at Obito, Madara, and Nagato and see what we can learn from them, their ideals, their motivations, and their endgame. Nagato helped Yaiko build the Akatsuki because they wanted to achieve world peace. As a result of Yaiko's death, Nagato became misdirected in his pursuit for peace, creating the alter ego of pain and attempting to impose peace into the world by subjecting everyone to the same suffering. Those who do not know pain will never understand true peace. This world shall know pain. Almighty push! In the wake of witnessing Rin's death, Obito longed for peace. He couldn't bear the thought of living in a world where an innocent girl had her life snatched away by conflict. Obito Uchiha's adversity as a child, the trauma of Rin's death, and Madara's indoctrination led to a profoundly misguided young man who intended to achieve world peace by casting an infinite genjutsu, establishing a perfect world built on illusion. I get it. I'm in hell. Madara was born into a period of conflict, which he and Hashirama despised. Both of them desired world peace, but while Hashram believed that humans were fundamentally good and capable of achieving this on their own, Madara believed that people were fundamentally evil and incapable of such. Rather than wasting time persuading them, he desired to employ the infinite Tsukiyomi to force everyone to conform to his definition of peace, again creating a world of illusion, a perfect world. I'm leaving the village. I found a different path, a different way. I can see it only because we have bared our insides to each other. Cooperation is merely a quieter form of conflict. Here is a glance at Makima's ultimate goal. Makima, like the other three Naruto antagonists I mentioned, desired a world free of fear, death, and pain. In other words, she desired peace. We'll get to the second element of Makima's goal later on in this analysis. But these characters shared a desire for peace, but they go about it in a terrible manner, through manipulation and fear, ironically. The second element of Makima's goal was to spend the rest of her days with Puchita and enjoy his company, when she couldn't build equal and genuine relationships as the control devil. She constantly longed for something like a family, quite ironic. 
she was able to orchestrate a family for Denji and many friends from Aki to Power, Beam, Kobeni, Kishibe, but she could never do the same for herself. At least, she couldn't make it genuine. She had her own unhealthy obsession with Puchita similar to what Denji had with her. Because she was so preoccupied with her own fixation, she failed to see that introducing other people into Denji's life would help him break his own fixations. Makima wanted to give Denji a life and then slowly take away everything from him so that she could have the chainsaw man for herself. But as I keep reiterating, she only planned for power and Aki. She didn't anticipate Denji would form more friendships and deepen relationships along the way. Someone should have told her Shonen Jump's three core values. Makima is the perfect mirror to Denji. They both yearn for family, to be loved. Denji had no one besides Pachita. He was content whilst Makima had everyone, but it was superficial, based on control, it wasn't enough for her, it was fake. She could make everyone in the world love her, but not Puchita. She, similar to Denji, did not understand love and relationships, she thought she did. It's why she couldn't fathom how Pachita could love someone like Denji, to her was a bad person. Makima does not grow, unlike Denji, despite being older and wiser, she does not try to change, while Denji embarks on a hero's journey, his coming of age story, Makima is regressing, as her facade of this perfect woman crumbles. From the moment Makima and Denji had crossed paths, her fate was sealed. There was no way Puchita would ever let someone like Makima control him. We see it throughout the series. While Denji is affected, Puchita's eyes are always open to the truth. When Denji asks Puchita if he can guess what girl he likes, he goes through it in this order. Power, the person who ultimately gave Denji everything he would want in a partner. Angel Devil, who wasn't a woman but played a very important role nonetheless. One of Haki Hayakawa's best friends throughout the series. And a valuable ally, Kobeni, who at first let her anxiety get the better of her almost killing Denji but ended up becoming a friend who gave Denji the final push he needed to defeat Makima by grounding him after all he had been through prior. Rize, who was Denji's first taste at love, but alas, she manipulated him and caused him far more harm than good. Followed lastly by Makima, who was a sickness, a poison that detested Denji and had only wished for his downfall. Her yearning for the love of Puchita, mixed with her hubris on top of looking down on humans as they were animals, destroyed her. In my recent video, as I said before, I go into great length on Makima's claim that she gave Denji and Power a sibling relationship, which I think is ironic. If you haven't seen that video yet, as I said, I highly recommend it. Chapter 95, pages 14 to 15 really stood out to me. It perfectly captures Makima's flaws and her state of mind. During Makima and Denji's battle, she gains the upper hand. But before she deals the killing blow, she stops to berate Denji. Chainsaw Man doesn't spit. Chainsaw Man doesn't wear clothes and doesn't talk. Every action he takes should be chaotic. And yet, despite not getting him at all, you were chosen by Chainsaw Man. Juxtapose this to what Puchida said in chapter 97, pages 16 and 17. Denji, my dream was to have someone hug me. Sounds easy, right? Except I'm too strong, so it's actually really hard. But you made my dream come true. Similar to Makima, Puchita had power, but no companionship. With great power comes great loneliness, great isolation. However, with great power must also come great responsibility. With Denji, Puchita was able to fulfill his dream. His power was used to save people, while Makima used hers to instill fear. Because of Makima's own inadequacies, she was unable to see that not only Denji and her were similar, but Pachita as well. And that's why he and Denji were able to click together so well. Makima's idolization of the Chainsaw Man blinded her from the possibility that he could be just like her, assuming she even acknowledged her own weakness to begin with. When the control devil was reincarnated as Nayuta, Makima found that she had become the sister she had entrusted to Denji opposed to power. The same person she had scorned was the one to ultimately take care of her. Despite everything she had done to him, Denji was able to put all of that aside. He was the first and only person to truly love her.
This is Grim Toki. This has been Beyond Animation, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Dream keeps me going through the night.